Hello everybody and welcome to another one of these photo speed videos with myself, Sam Gregory. And I'm here today to compare two different papers on two different images as part of our paper comparison series. And today we're going to be looking at the Legacy Gloss 325 versus the NST Bright White 315. Now, uh, what we're going to do is print, print both images on both papers and then we're going to have a good look at them, a couple of close-ups and I'll give you some of my thoughts about which paper might suit which image best. And the two images we're using, we've got this sort of autumnal soft coloured woodland scene here on your left or my right of the screen. And then we have another uh, image also from autumn, but you wouldn't necessarily know it. Uh, it's in black and white, which is the one closest to me here, obviously. And we're going to print that on both papers as well. So two different types of images, one a little bit more muted and the other one a little bit more punchy. And we're looking to give both the papers a good old test across the range of what they can do. And I'll give you my thoughts about them too. Now, just before we do that, if you do enjoy these videos and you want to see more about papers and learning how to print from home, just subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for all the latest updates. And before we get into the close-ups on the uh, prints and my thoughts, I'm going to quickly jump you into the computer, just tell you a little bit about the images, quickly walk through the print prep process, and then we'll get into comparing the papers back to back. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay everyone, I'm going to be fairly brief here on the computer, just going to show you this is our black and white image and you can see this sort of backlit, uh, you know, central positioning of the tree is something that I suppose is always uh, questionable, uh, but it had such kind of great presence there in the middle and all these branches and, and bark coming out, it just kind of feels like veins to me uh, coming out. And uh, so actually, although it was an autumnal time of year and originally thought about in colour, it really does work best for me in black and white because of that backlighting and how that then contrasts against uh, the tree and all the branches. And uh, the second image is another autumnal one actually, and this was shot in uh, the Lake District. And I just wanted to take a moment just briefly to talk about this one because um, it was very, very, very foggy on this morning. And actually what I've had to do in the edit is actually introduce a bit of dehaze just to sort of cut through uh, that fog if you sort of bring that back to where it where it was um, for me uh, having printed this a couple of times uh, if we don't cut through a little bit of that fog uh, especially if we're using a sort of matte paper it's sort of that uh, haze sort of loses some of the quality and, and the the tangibility the touchability shall we say of the print when it comes out. So I found from past experience, and this is something that you just get, that actually, although potentially it's nice uh, having that really foggy look, um, that actually when it comes to the print, I do just have to bring a bit of this in. Uh, and that's not something I do very often, to be honest. I tend to stay quite clear from that dehaze slider. It can be quite aggressive, as, as can the clarity one. Um, but getting the colors right on this is super important. The other thing I would say, uh, when you have that fog and it's cold and it's early in the morning is often there can be quite a lot of blue uh, residual kind of light and hue and tone and saturation in in the image and you have to just be really careful of white balance because if we just bring that down a little bit uh, you can see how blue that's uh, starting to feel and uh, you know this is a, a thing obviously you can change after in the edit but I would always sort of encourage uh, getting your white balance uh, right at the time just so that your eye can see on the back of the camera really what's happening and just be very sensitive to those blues in the same way if we take it too far and over color it um, it becomes too warm in my opinion a bit too romantic and we we can tell that because these these um you know these central columns uh, and the wood around them starts to take on this slightly sickly yellowy orange feel which which your eye knows isn't isn't right and so it sort of immediately tells you, hang on, this this probably isn't quite uh, what was going on. Uh, so, you know, somewhere around this 5.7 feels about right to me. Anyway, that's just a little bit of detail, but might be useful for you when you're printing your autumnal images, I suppose. It's that kind of time of year. Um, but what we'll do, uh, I'll get these printed out onto um, the, the different papers and uh, we'll try it on the Legacy Gloss uh, 325 and the NST Bright White. And it'd be interesting to see how the colour and the black and white one come out and we'll show you those or I'll show you those in much more detail with a couple of close-ups and I'll give you my thoughts as well. But for now, 
I shall get them printed out on the wonderful Canon Pro 300 and we'll check them out. Okay, so let's get into the black and white uh, image first. And uh, I'm going to show you some close-ups from a different shot just so you can have a look at it. I do appreciate the challenges of seeing that through the internet on YouTube, etc. Uh, but I obviously do my best to balance the lighting to give you the best possible comparison. And I'll try and fill you in with a little bit more detail from me. Now, in this particular image, I actually think my winner, uh, if, if there has to be one, is the Legacy Gloss 325. I did a separate video a few a couple of months ago now about the Legacy Gloss and the Platinum Barita, and on that particular one I chose the Barita just because of the type of image. And I was determined to find the right image for the Legacy Gloss. I knew it was a great paper, I just needed to work out what type of image worked best with it. And I think in this instance we have such great contrast, and it's one of those images that on the screen um, feels very luminous and very illuminating, like it's just punching out from the screen because of the bright light coming from, you know, the background and that backlit feel. And often when you print those images, uh, they, they can feel a little flatter than you want because you're used to seeing it on a backlit screen. And that is one of the problems generally or challenges uh, with printing from home and making sure you get the right setup. Whereas I think here, the Legacy Gloss has done a fantastic job of keeping that punch and that vibrancy, I don't mean in colour obviously, but that luminosity, shall we say, of, of the scene. And I'm still feeling from the, um, from the Legacy Gloss print that I've got that kind of backlit screen vibe going on. Whereas the NST Bright White has done a, it's done a good job, but I think it's just slightly less contrasty and that light is lost a little, the punch of that light from behind is lost just a little. Um, versus the Legacy Gloss anyway. And so I think here, those are the main reasons and also the slightly darker bottom area near the tree, I think is more attractive on the Legacy Gloss. It's just a bit more punchy, a bit more contrasty, a bit more depth in those dark areas, which helps this sort of image, which is black and white, you know, not necessarily assorted shades of gray or anything subtle. It's, you know, it's heavier darks, isn't it, and whites. Uh, we want that contrast. And I think on that instance, the Legacy Gloss has done a great job. So uh, I'm really pleased that I found the right thing for it because as I say, I knew it was a good paper. If you've never tried the Legacy Gloss on the punchier black and whites, uh, I would give that a try. And also uh, the Platinum Cotton, uh, I've done a separate video about that and the Platinum Etching, uh, which is either out or coming soon. And that's another nice paper, the Platinum Cotton 305. If you do want something matte, uh, but still to have a little bit of punch to the black and white. But I think here, the gloss, um, even though it's unglazed, the gloss paper does do a better job. And I'm not normally prone to saying that, but in this instance, I think it does. Anyway, let's get into the colour image because that might well be a slightly different story. Okay, so let's get into this colour image. And it's a slightly uh, tricky one in a way because the conditions, uh, as I may have mentioned on the computer side of things, uh, it was quite misty. So that tends to leave... Um, quite a bit of, and it was early in the morning and it was cold, so there was quite a bit of blue in the air, should we say, and the mist was quite dense. It was quite heavy, the fog really, I suppose. It was more than mist perhaps. And so uh, I have used a tiny bit of dehaze just to kind of cut through that fog, uh, you know, for the purposes of, of seeing what was in it <laughs> uh, with our trees here. And so I've been very careful about the coloration and it does have a slightly more yellow feel um, which is kind of correct. That's kind of how it was at the time. And that's what's trying to get through in the print as well. I kind of knew already this would be a very difficult one for the Legacy Gloss to win because I have a natural penchant for the matte papers. Uh, I know the black and white one we just talked about was a contrast to that. But I think here when you have such beautiful texture and such beautiful subtlety of form and um, colour and mood that I just think the matte papers generally do a really, really good job of um, highlighting that and connecting the mood of the image to the mood in the final print. And uh, whereas I find any of the gloss or the baritas even, they have this slight sort of sheen over them. And because of that, I, in a weird way, it's kind of like there's a physical restrictive barrier. I can't get through to the, to the trees, to the woods, to the, to the color, to the mood, to the atmosphere. And that, might, that may sound a bit odd, but I'm sure some of you will know what I mean if you've used those sorts of papers. With this, I, th I feel just more like I'm there 
I can touch it, I'm right in it, it feels more tactile to me. Uh, and I just think as well how the, the general rendering of the colour and that softness, I do prefer the NST Bright White on this occasion. But like I've said with the previous one, the Legacy Gloss does different things for different people in different ways. So it does just depend on your penchant and your preference, shall we say. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. Uh, there's more of these videos out. Like I say, I've compared the Platinum Cotton and the Platinum Etching, and I've compared the Legacy Gloss to the Platinum Baryta on a different type of black and white image as well. Uh, if you do find them interesting, do leave some comments and let us know if you have any other queries. Uh, otherwise, stay subscribed, keep your eye on that notifications bell for latest videos, and myself or Tim or one of the other PhotoSpeed team will talk to you again very soon.